Good early morning to you, everybody. Good morning to you and a most blessed and joyous and happy, happy Easter. Uh, this is Easter Sunday. It is about 5.30 in the morning here on Easter Sunday, April the 4th. And it is wonderful to be with you, and I just wanted to take a couple of minutes and ask for uh, this occasion and this opportunity to visit with you and to celebrate Easter, the glorious celebration, the highest feast of the Christian faith, and that is our Lord's Resurrection. Just as he said several times that he would be handed over, he would be betrayed, he would be crucified, and three days later he would rise again, and that is exactly what happened, and that is exactly what we celebrate today, this Easter Sunday. It is an occasion of great joy and celebration because our salvation and our redemption has been accomplished the gates of heaven have been opened wide, and we are now heirs of eternal life, where we will spend eternity with Jesus in the eternal throne room of heaven. Thanks and praise be to God. Let me pray with you just for a moment, and then we'll um, uh, read a passage of scripture from the gospel that is appointed for this Easter Sunday. So let's do that. Let me pray with you. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, for this wonderful Easter Sunday, it is a joy to be in your house of worship. We didn't have Easter last year because of COVID, but we do have Easter this year, and I thank you for that, to be able to gather together for our sunrise service here in a couple of hours, to be with brothers and sisters here, to share the faith, to sing the glorious Easter hymns, to read the Easter gospel, and as Easter culminates around the world as Christians are gathering worldwide to share the same faith, to celebrate the same truth, to rejoice in the same victory that our Lord Jesus Christ has accomplished, that as we considered the events of his passion on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday of his rest in the tomb on Saturday and of his glorious resurrection that we celebrate today. I pray, Lord, that as we now know death has been defeated, that life and victory are yours and that you have given them to us, that we are righteous in your sight now because of the righteousness of Christ, and that in his glorious resurrection we hear the promise of St. Paul that we are united with him in his death, in our own death, and also in his resurrection with our own resurrection. And that, I thank you, Lord, is the great victory that you have accomplished for us, our salvation, and that we live our lives in that salvation, and that in the Lord Jesus Christ we pray this glorious and wonderful Easter Sunday. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen and amen. All right, everybody, let me read to you the Christmas, or rather the Christmas, the Easter gospel that I'm going to be preaching on during our services this morning. This year, we're reading the Easter account from the Gospel of St. Mark in Mark chapter 16, and I'm reading verses 1 through 8, so let me share this with you. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. You know, that's kind of a curious account of our 
Lord's resurrection that uh, St. Mark records. It is in the Gospel of Mark that we run into that uh, uh, historic conundrum as to whether this is actually the ending of St. Mark's Gospel or whether the uh, long ending, as it's called, verses 9 through 16, uh, is actually part of the Gospel. I'm not going to uh, belabor that point with you this morning. I do believe that uh, uh, the, the, the Gospel continues on and that uh, it This is kind of a curious way to end the gospel, uh, a day of great joy and celebration to say that that they ran away for they were afraid. I'm sure they were. I would be afraid too because they had (coughs) seen the evidence that Jesus was not in the tomb and they saw the angel who spoke to them and said that he is risen and that fear seized them because they didn't know what had actually happened, at least not yet. They would find out very soon afterward. But we know, we know that indeed the Lord Jesus Christ was raised, that he came alive again, that he is now in his glorious state, that he did appear to his disciples, that he was on the earth for an extra 40 days before he was ascended into heaven. And that is what we celebrate Easter Sunday. The wonderful truth of Easter, of our Lord's resurrection, is that this is God's solution for our sin. Our sins are now atoned. They are paid for. We have been redeemed. Christ paid for them with his life, with his blood, with his anguish, with his terrible death on the cross, and with this now glorious celebration of his resurrection. We are right with God. We are reconciled with him. We live with him in this life, in the midst of the sinfulness and the godlessness that still permeates this world and this life. But we transcend that world and this life because you and I, dear friends, are people of faith. We have been baptized. We receive the blessed sacrament of our Lord's body and blood. We have been given the forgiveness of our sins. This is what what Jesus' death and resurrection did for us. And only this could accomplish our salvation. And that Jesus, as he proclaimed from the cross, as he said, it is finished, so it is. There is nothing that we need to do. There is nothing that we can do that our Lord has done it all, and he has done it for you. That's Easter, dear friends. It's really very simple, and yet it is so powerful and so dramatic and so wonderful that now you and I are redeemed. We are right with God. He sees us, and he is pleased with us because of his Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so as you celebrate this Easter Sunday, and I pray that you do, you do go to church somewhere, your own congregation, and that if not, that this little message, I pray, may be a blessing for you also, because this is what Easter is, the celebration of the resurrection of the Son of God, the Messiah, the Christ, our Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so again, let me say to you, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And so then, dear friends, receive the Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. A very, very happy and blessed Easter to you and yours, dear friends, in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have a great day, a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you and see you again real soon. Bye-bye.